Hello and welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, we are having a discussion with Dr. Ravi Batra about the economic and political developments that are resulting after the election, unexpected election of President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, hear his views on what he thinks. We thank the AC Plaza again for giving this uh, platform to share our views. Um, and uh, just a reminder, uh, in the, uh, in the, as we are talking in the last segment about Professor Batra explaining about the free trade and some things to do with Dallas, you know, the, the communities of Oak Cliff and uh, Highland Park is what he was referring to. And we are going to we are going uh, to discuss with Dr. Batra about what exactly was telling. Can you can you please go on what exactly you are telling about Oak Cliff? Yeah, see, o Oak Cliff is a very poor area. Okay. Uh -huh. Highland Park is the richest uh, part of Dallas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now suppose uh, somebody wants to start a new business. Right. They would think, okay, let me produce in Oak Cliff. We'll get cheap rent there. We have cheap labor, low wage uh, labor, we'll produce there, and then our cost will be low, but we can sell these goods at very high prices in Highland Park mm -hmm. because people are very rich there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that makes perfect business, business sense, sense definitely. for that merchant, for that uh, producer. And that's exactly what hap has been happening uh, about free trade in the past uh, 40, 50 years. Right. China. Uh -huh. invited American companies to come to China and use their low wage workers, produce goods there, and then China expected that these companies would ship these goods back to the United States to charge high prices. Mm -hmm. This way companies would benefit a lot and they could then tell the world, see, we're helping everybody by bringing cheap goods to America prices will be low, inflation will be low, but they forgot. They said they would, and they would, they would say consumers are benefit, benefiting, but they forgot that the consumers are also the workers. Right. What good are these low prices if workers lose jobs exactly. Exactly. and they have no income, these prices, low prices mean nothing to them. Right, right. So that's exactly the business model, Oak Cliff versus Highland Park model that China followed with the help of American companies. Right. And so now the results are for everybody to see. The rich producers, the producers have gotten the richest ever in America, whereas workers of America have lost out. And I'm sorry to say that I had made this prediction in my 1993 book, The Myth of Free Trade, that American workers will become very poor because of rising foreign trade because of free trade. Dr. Batra, thank you for that views. In fact, you know, when I authored my book, Mass Capitalism, it is not just the workers, but even the nation has a big security threat is what I saw. Because what I saw is that not just China manufactured at low price, they also dump heavy amount of counterfeits mm -hmm. in our military produce. And 40% of US Department of Defense supply chain is filled with fake or counterfeit goods from China. Means you know, really? so yeah, forty percent. And uh, means, uh, the, the problem I don't understand is that why why are these politicians so much about when when the people elect them into power to do something for the country, and when they know that the policies are although fa favoring the rich, it's it's so much dangerous for a country. Why they still don't change? You know, well, why the richest, they still don't change? The richest one percent of the people have bought out politicians. They have purchased the services of economists. And they simply tow their lines. They offer them tax benefits. They offer them theories like free trade is good for American consumer. Well, consumer is no good if the worker, yeah, exactly. yes. if the worker is not making money, yeah. how are they going to consume? Exactly. That's yeah. very true. That's very true. So now uh, we're talking about uh, President-elect Trump and his policies. So we are putting Trumponomics on trial right now. What's happening? What, what do you see in this near future? What is President-elect Trump going to do? What are his pol how are his policies going to work out? Can you, can you tell us something about, something about what do you think he's going well, to do? Well, President Trump won because he understood that free trade is the killer. <laughs> has destroyed our uh, manufacturing. And so he said we have to restrain trade. Okay. We, uh, by restricting trade, we will cut down our trade deficit. We will revive manufacturing in America. And in fact, uh, since his election, he 
he continues to tweet, by the way. Right, he is a Twitter, <laughs> a Twitter person, yeah. Right, and uh, the media doesn't like that either. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a very good way. Is it? To keep these rich politicians and rich, richest companies in line. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at this, uh, uh, Boeing. Uh -huh. Yeah, Boeing, we heard about <laughs> Boeing it. Boeing was going yeah, to charge yeah, yeah, four yeah. billion dollars for one airplane. Plane, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Trump tweeted about it, and now they're saying we'll cut our car. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Ford was going to ship jobs to Mexico. Yeah. Mr. Trump complained about it in, in his tweet. Yeah. Ford now says they will <laughs> domestically <laughs> they yeah. will produce them here. Yeah. So it's a very effective weapon that he has right. to shame these public people right. into the right policy. That's good. See, uh, good. In the, in, under the umbrella of secrecy, they do all these things. Right, right. And once their actions are exposed, they then reverse the reaction. They know they're not doing the right thing. So once those actions are exposed, then they reverse So, so Mr. Uh, President-elect Trump is certainly making use of technology, That's uh, social right. media, <laughs> exactly. to get his message out. That's right. So now he's making a good use of technology, is what I would say, as a, as a technologist. But Professor Batra, my question now comes to you is that, this uh, technological progress that has happened over years, you know, I have authored books on it, has led to rapid growth in product. That is the whole purpose of technological progress, to let the productivity grow as fast as possible. Right. But now, when, when this productivity goes so fast, certainly, do you, don't you think that there might be a gap between wages and productivity? And if there is a gap, uh, that, that gap is leading to unemployment? What, well, do you, what do you see? Yeah, yeah, see, that's the line taken by most economists and uh, and these uh, richest corporations. The right. new technology uh -huh. is the cause of unemployment and hence hence poverty. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, it's not. This is a totally mistaken view. Okay. This is not supported by history. Okay. Because history shows that new technology is not new. Okay. It keeps occurring again and again. First, we had horse-driven carriages in America then came railroads, then came cars. So technology keeps coming. And now we have airplanes, robotics, cell phones, fax machines, computers, and so Social on. Social media. Social media. Yeah, yeah. So te new technology is nothing new. Yet, for much of our, our, of our history, we have had full employment. OK, OK. And if there is full employment, there is not much poverty. So the question is, how come we had full employment in our economy in spite of these constantly occurring new technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So history does not support the view that new technology cuts jobs. This is the main reason. New technology is of two types. Okay. One that replaces labor, mm -hmm. and another that creates jobs for workers. Okay. <coughs> that kind of technology is called new product technology. Right. So in the past, L workers were replaced by one type of in invention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then they found high paying jobs, higher paying jobs, or higher wages in new products. But nowadays what happens? Technology only replaces American labor because new products are now produced in other countries like China, Vietnam, and, uh, and India, and so on. So new technology now only has a destructive effect on the American economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The positive effect is destroyed by outsourcing of what you call offshoring. Right. So it's not the technology's fault, it's the government policy. So, so uh, what, what one question now comes over here that, so election of President-elect Trump is certainly a put a jeopardy, in making India to be in jeopardy because they wanted low cost for low cost manufa manufacturing facility for the multinationals. So, President election of Trump is now a threat for the Make in India campaign. What do you see? Well, see, India is, is of course a source of, uh, India of course gets a major share of outsourcing, but India does not export a lot of goods, ma manufacturing yeah. manufactured goods to the United States. Right. They mostly come from China, Korea, Vietnam, Singapore, other, yeah, yeah, other yeah, countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So India is not um, responsible, does not have that much responsibility in destroying American manufacturing. Right. Uh, although they have some share of that, it's mostly other Asian countries that are doing that. Okay. And that's why China 
That's why Mr. Trump singled out China. China, yeah, he has. Because we have huge trade deficits as well exactly. with China. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. right. Uh, okay, so Dr. Batra, now uh, coming uh, to my question to you, because since you have been predicting revolutions in his book, you know, the, the new golden age, where you told that there will be a revolution in 2009 and again in 2016. My question is that you consider President Barack Obama's election also to be revolutionary in the sense that, see, uh, what I have analyzed over the years is that his economic policies have been disastrous, has been a failure. So why you call that election to, to, to be a revolution? Can, can you please tell our viewers why, why is that well, a revolution? Yeah, revolution, his, his, his uh, election was a revolution uh, because in, in the light of what has happened in past 5,000 years of recorded history. Okay. Uh -huh. he, gave, he gave great credibility to the idea that a black person can be elected uh, as, as, as the head of the richest and the most powerful military nation. Okay. The United States at one time was the richest nation. Right. And, and militarily, militar militarily, it is still the most powerful. Definitely. This has never happened in 5,000 years of recorded history. Is it? Okay. I, 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 and I, I know about that history because I have written about it. In all this history, there has not been a single black person mm -hmm. who headed such a vast empire, financial and military empire uh, of a nation. And this is the first time that has happened. So. Mr. Ob Obama's election was a tremendous revolution. So you mean to world. say that he broke the glass ceiling? He broke the glass ceiling that now tomorrow, it's or in future also we can still have another black person come that's up. Right. He, that's right. He broke the glass ceiling. Yeah. And <laughs> an incredibly high glass ceiling. Right. It's right. the no black person has been elected in Europe, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. That's true. Right? That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or and uh, in other Asian countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Africa, they are elected, but yeah. then they are not so such uh, empiric, uh, huge nation, vast nation. Right, right, right. So, from that perspective, you yeah. It so a his election was a, a great event for not only the black people, for the entire humanity, because for the first time this thing happened. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, Dr. Batra, then uh, 2016. I, I certainly believe that whether I love him or whether any one of our viewers love him or whether they hate him. President-elect Trump's election is certainly a revolution. Oh yes, it's a revolution. Now, now all I want to know is that what do you foresee happening in the near future with Trumponomics? That's happening. What, what is Trumponomics now? We are putting it on trial over here. That's right. So, what's, <laughs> what's, what's, what what we can expect now from it? Uh, well, Mr. Trump's uh, policies ha ha have three components. Okay. One is the anti-free trade or anti-outsourcing component. That, I think, is in the interest of the U.S. economy. Okay. Uh -huh. But then he also wants to cut taxes for corporations and raise government spending on defense and infrastructure. Okay. That will raise the budget deficit sharply. Mm -hmm. And that's also like what we call trickle-down economics. Okay, that happened in the 80s. Have started in the 1980s. Okay, and it essentially has continued to this day, and he essentially is going to extend that further. So the poverty in America is high because of two reasons. Okay, one is outsourcing and free trade and, and the trade deficit, mm -hmm. and the other is this trickle down economics. Okay, uh -huh. believe me or not, the government money makes the rich richer. 99, 95% of government money goes to the park into the pockets of the rich. Just 5% helps the poor communities. And I can, I've proved that. By the way, I've proved that in this book with the, with the end unemployment now. Yeah, this is the latest. So book. government makes the rich richer in a democratically elected society where people elect a person in power. How is this? Happening. The government. How is them. how is the government making rich richer? Means this is something. No one can expect in a democratically Nobody. Nobody elected society. That. But I have shown with numerical examples, very simple numerical examples, okay. how 95% of the government money uh -huh. go, gets into the pockets of the rich, of the, no, not the rich, the richest. Richest. And the poor become poorer because they just get 5% of, of the government money but pay a huge amount of tax uh, share. So the poor get poorer, the rich gets richer with the help of the government. And it's very simple 
to, to argue, and, and history supports me. I see, I don't make any argument which history does not support. Okay, okay. So history supports me on that. So, so this book, End Unemployment Now, did you send it to President-elect Trump? Uh, I sent it to, who did I send it to? I sent it to his campaign manager. Uh, and what was the reply the, to it? Before the election, actually. Oh, before the election? Yeah. So before he was even becoming contender, he was contesting among the 17, party, 17 participants? When did you send it? I <laughs> sent it, uh, no, I sent it uh, in uh, October. So he had he had a nomination uh, from yeah. the party? Uh, he already was nominated. nominated. Okay, okay. But uh, he was facing great hurdles uh -huh. from uh, the Democrats and many, many rich Republicans were yeah, yeah, yeah. criticizing him. Absolutely. They did not want him to be elected. Absolutely. absolutely. Why? Because absolutely. they have a connection with China. Yeah, absolutely. And the rich Democrats also have a connection with China. Right. They right. prosper right. with all that trade. Yeah. So, so his, his election is certainly, certainly a revolution against the rule of money in society. Okay. In, he showed in the elections. His in election. the Democratic elections. Right. Yeah, yeah. He showed that for the first time, he showed that if your ideas resonate with the public, you don't need money to get elected. Okay. That's okay. a revolution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he ran on his own money. Ran on his own money. On money and and also he didn't choose much. Yeah, right, the right. His ideas were so novel, his ideas were so new that the media, even though they criticized him a lot, they kept airing his, yeah, his yeah. broadcast, yeah, yeah, kept definitely. showing that. Uh, In fact, people were, a lot the of many people. of the media people were telling that Trump is shooting in his own foot his by taking telling all these things but actually it resulted in his victory so that was yeah. unexpected for many what many, happened many, yeah, many yeah, yeah. viewpoints it yeah. was an established think tanks i would say yeah yeah, right. yeah. Uh, so I, I would also like to know more about uh, uh, what should be the trump's policies to fix the american economy so what do you think is the right thing to do for mr so, trump so, so, so uh, we're talking about the future right so the future is yeah, future, future means what do you see, foresee, uh, Mr. So Trump? I think Trump initially policies. his policies will create some economic problems. Oh, even uh, Time magazine was telling that, you know, means yeah. in fact China is going to have uh, problems, you know, we have, uh, he's going to take over China and then all our manufacturing in China, so we're going to have initially a lot of problems. I, how, don't, how are we there going to... There will be dislocation. Yeah, yeah. There so will be dislocation. I think so, th this would be a certainly interesting thing to cover what we're discussing right now. So why don't we let the commercial break go through okay. and let's let's hear your views about how Trumponomics is going to work in the near future. And uh, please, so listeners, please stay tuned. Viewers, please stay tuned and we'll have Professor Batra talk about having Trumponomics on trial now. And it's a very interesting segment. So please uh, come back. Thank you very much.